another session uh, being organized by Al Manar Center, which is very what we are very excited about. It's a brand new session that we've put together by the name Elm Summit. And if you've already seen the uh, the advertisements, and if you've already seen our marketing that we've done, the whole purpose behind doing this uh, summit, the Elm Summit, was to revive the spirit of learning. And insha'Allah ta'ala, uh, the organizers have put a lot of thought into the overall packaging of this session. And uh, before I begin, I definitely would like to, uh, you know, uh, make sure that all of you are as well safe and insha'Allah ta'ala that uh, you are enjoying these sessions in from the comfort of your house and insha'Allah ta'ala all the family members may actually involve uh, into these sessions. What we've got from the elements perspective is something very interesting. We've got lectures by eight different international orators on Islam. And we've got online courses that you will be able to attend. Uh, you've got quiz competitions where you can actually uh, earn rewards from. There, these competitions are going to also be held during these sessions. And we've got an online exhibition. Take benefit from this, inshallah. We've got an exhibition on the Quran, on the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and about the history of Islam. For all of this and more information, please visit us at www.almanarconvention.com slash Elm Summit. And inshallah, from there you will find our online uh, presents on YouTube, on Facebook channel. And inshallah, we we'll request all of you to subscribe and share this with your loved ones, with your neighbors, with your family members and people across the globe so that every one of them can inshallah benefit from these sessions that we've been lined up today for you. And like I said, these sessions have been brought up for the entire family. So please engage, come together and I am sure inshallah bi idhnillah, by the will of Allah, we shall all be able to have and grasp the knowledge the precious knowledge about islam be able to practice on it and inshallah ta'ala be able to benefit from this in this world and in the hereafter without any delays inshallah ta'ala as you have joined us for our first session and i'd like to introduce to all of you our first speaker for the end summit on today's session inshallah which is Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Al Kubaisi, which who is the Grand Mufti of Dubai, and he is associated with the Shun Al Islamiyah, which is the Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities Department, Hukumat Dubai, the Government of Dubai. Please join me to welcome Sheikh Dr. Mohammed Al Kubaisi for his talk on the topic Elm and Helm. Sheikh Dr. Mohammed Al Kubaisi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, I think the organizer would like me to speak from the other device. Can you hear me or not? We can hear you, Sheikh. We can hear you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-musaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The uh, topic about ilm and hilm is chosen wisely. Now, uh, the concept of ilm or seeking knowledge in Islam is very famous, and I'm sure that the rest of the speakers are going to cover it thoroughly. So, we are not going to uh, discuss it in detail in the session. However, we will discuss the link between ilm and hilm. And uh, if you would like, the, many people think that there, is, there shouldn't be any relation between knowledge and morals and etiquette. Because the idea of knowledge is something that is materialistic, usually uh, based on tangible factors or elements, uh, while the concept of etiquette and moral is not the same. Uh, it is usually uh, something that is based on the philosophy of uh, dealing with people. Uh, so it is not the same. So there shouldn't be a direct link between them. Uh, however, is this the case? Let us refer to the first primary source in Islam, the most important source in Islam, which is the Holy Quran, the Noble Quran. Where was the first mention of human being? 
the first mention of Adam alayhi salam in the very beginning of the Holy Quran and Surah Al-Baqarah. When Allah Almighty spoke about Adam alayhi salam, what did he speak about? He linked it with what? He actually mentioned teaching Adam. So the first mention of Adam alayhi salam comes immediately after teaching. He does not speak about the creation of Adam at that moment. So they, they, the word Adam or the name Adam is mentioned immediately with knowledge. And this is something that is very uh, exciting and interesting about the, the story uh, of creation. Uh, it shows us that Allah Almighty blessed the human being with this beautiful and great and unique ability to seek knowledge and understand it and preserve it and then spread it and then build upon it and continue to develop. And uh, that is something that is very uh, unique. However, the same story, the story does not stop with knowledge because the story moves from there to prostration to Adam alayhi salam, the order given to the angels. And the angels obeyed. And uh, uh, all of the angels, without any exception, the only exception was one of the jinn, that is Satan, one of the jinn who was with the angels at the time and the order was given to him as well. Here, the morals and the etiquettes or the behavior of Satan is the exact opposite of what we are talking about. So instead of following the truth and obeying the order of his Lord, Allah Almighty, and prostrating out of respect to Adam alayhi salam, he did the opposite, which is he denied uh, all of that and he refused to obey the order and he was arrogant and stubborn and refused to follow uh, the truth. Now, uh, what, what is the link between the, the refusal there and the teaching of Adam? Here, Allah Almighty is teaching us that Adam alayhi salam get the knowledge and uh, Satan has knowledge as well. And the angel do have knowledge as well. So all these three, three creatures have knowledge. However, Adam alayhi salam was taught by Allah Almighty and he was humble and he acknowledged his mistakes later on and he apologized and he did the right thing. The angels, the same, they don't they do mistakes. However, when it was explained to them by Allah Almighty, they obeyed the order without any question. And the question in the beginning was to understand the wisdom behind that creation. The third reaction is totally the opposite. He knew and he realized and he was surprised by the abilities of Adam alayhi salam. However, he refused to obey. So the etiquette or the behavior of shaitan was not the same, it was the opposite. It gives us a very beautiful connection between ilm and etiquettes and morals. And helm is one of the most important out of them as we'll explain. Because knowledge without etiquette is very dangerous. It is actually the key to all evils. Oh, and a person can discover so many lethal things that are available in the world or can develop them by mixing or, 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 or manufacturing uh, uh, many different elements and being able to hurt human beings or destroy the environment or harm it or harm other creatures and so on. With that knowledge, if that knowledge does not have a moral compass to tell it what is right and what is wrong, what should be done, what should not be done, we will see many examples of what is widespread nowadays all over the world. The corruption and the, uh, of, of land and sea and the environment and people uh, and, and, and livelihood of many people and so on. And the inequality between people and the destruction of, of natural habitats and natural resources, the misuse of them and the wastage and so on and so on. It's beyond count. What happened here is that the misuse of that knowledge. So we had the knowledge of insecticide and controlling uh, pests, for example, and the knowledge of uh, chemical fertilizations and uh, fertilizers and, and uh, the use of, of, of different materials uh, in agriculture and in uh, herd keeping. However, there are misuses of them. Here, the knowledge did not have a uh, fine moral compass and that is what happened. The opposite is that morals or etiquette without knowledge is also very dangerous because here the person might follow blindly any idea, no matter how bizarre that idea might be, if it was quoted 
with some morality in it or a claim of morality. This is something that is also very dangerous. And we find many of the uh, extreme uh, ideas uh, around the world that are because they don't have enough knowledge. So it's a claim of moralities and the followers are blindly thinking that this is the moral thing and the correct thing to do and that is why they are doing it. And uh, knowledgeable people and people of, uh, of culture understand and laugh that these things out and, 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 and wonder about the, the, the strange uh, blind following of these people. So that is why we need both knowledge and morals and etiquettes. They together uh, complement one another. Uh, when you're speaking about helm, the word helm in Arabic is very beautiful. It has many different meanings. Uh, among them, uh, the, the patience uh, for appearance, uh, self-control, and especially during time of anger or time of agitation. So that is the concept of helm. So using your mind and your wisdom to be patient and for appearance and tolerant and to control yourself when you are angry and you are upset. And we have a beautiful uh, proverb uh, in Arabic explaining people who are clement and tolerant uh, that uh, as if the, the bird are standing on their heads, or if there is a bird standing on your head and you don't want it to, uh, to fly away, what do you do? You, you be very calm, are very, very gentle and very patient. That is the, so the example given to them because of how much they can control uh, themselves and, and not be agitated. Now, is Ilm specifically linked to Hilm? Um, yes. Actually, there is uh, a narration from Abu Darda. It is sometimes attributed to the Messenger, وسلم, but the attribution to the Messenger وسلم, is uh, considered weak by most scholars. However, it is correct, correctly attributed to uh, Abu Darda, one of the followers of the Messenger. And in it, he says that verily, uh, helm is by training yourself to achieve it. Or for parents comes by cultivating for parents or by trying to be patient and, and clement and tolerant until you uh, achieve it. Let us take an example uh, to get the idea that actually they are linked together. One of the most knowledgeable of all the creatures of Allah Almighty was Khalil al-Rahman, Ibrahim, peace be upon him. Abraham, peace be upon him, is nicknamed Khalil al-Rahman, the friend of Allah Almighty, or the beloved friend of Allah Almighty. And uh, the, uh, the, the description or the characteristics of uh, Ibrahim salam in the Holy Quran is that of Halim. In multiple places, Allah Almighty gave him the description of someone who has helm, someone who is for peering and, 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 and tolerant and... Uh, has a great uh, willpower and self-control. Allah Almighty gave us an example of that, how it is linked to ilm and while seeking knowledge and while teaching other people. And this is something very important, especially while teaching other people. And Allah Almighty gave us the example of Ibrahim Ali Islam who was trying to teach his father. So the way he addresses the father in these verses is something that is very beautiful. He, he was addressing him with such beautiful tone, a specific form in Arabic, uh, similar to, oh, my dear and beloved father. Uh, this is the, the, the entry. He was describing or, or mentioning to him, and he used very careful words when he taught him. So when, when he was teaching him and explaining to him the truth to worship Allah Almighty, and he says to him that, I have received knowledge that probably has not reached you. I have received knowledge from Allah Almighty. Uh, you're not aware of. So it's not like I am better than you or anything, but I was taught. So I, I am able to shed light on that or to, to guide you. And uh, he, he explained to him that I fear for you and your safety in the hereafter. And I'm afraid that Satan might uh, mislead you and Allah might be angry with you and so on. So the concept of the helm of Ibrahim السلام, while he was teaching is something that is uh, very uh, important. Now, when a person combines helm and ilm together, we get something very beautiful. That thing is that uh, you will be among those who are the best in the sight of Allah Almighty and in the sight of his messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
A very surprising question was asked uh, to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying, who is the best out of people? So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that the, the best uh, in the sight of Allah Almighty are those who are more pious. They say, we are not asking about that. He said, then the best among people is Yusuf Alayhi Salam because he is the uh, noble one, the son of the noble one, the son of the noble one, the son of the noble one. Yusuf alayhi salam, the son of uh, Yaqub alayhi salam, the son of Ishaq alayhi salam, the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So this is a, a noble person. This is the most noble out of people. So they say, we are not asking you about that. He says, probably you are asking me about the Arabs and their descent and their lineage. They said, yes. The Messenger وسلم, gave a very beautiful criteria. He says, those who were best in the pre-Islamic era or period in the Jahiliya, in the ignorance time, are the best in the era of Islam if they have the religious knowledge, if they comprehend the concept of the knowledge. So they had the uh, characteristics, the morals and the etiquettes, if they combine that with knowledge, they will be what? They will be the best among people. So the Messenger Sallallahu gave us the criteria here of how to judge that a person is actually good in the sight of Allah Almighty and his Messenger, or in this world and the hereafter, uh, when he combines these two together. Now, when a person has uh, ilm and helm together, uh, that will benefit him a lot and benefit other people around him. One of the things that uh, it will give him, it will give him the uh, self-confidence um, and self-control and stability and, 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 and firmness or, or steadiness during difficult times, especially. And uh, he will stand out among people around him. We have a beautiful story where uh, 20 people from Bahrain came to visit the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, this was uh, probably in the year, uh, the seventh or eighth year of uh, Hijrah. When they reached the Medina, they came in their cloth of traveling. This long travel, they were eager to meet the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they hurriedly run to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to meet him and say salam to him. All of them except for one. That person's name was Ashadju Abdul Qais. So he was gentle and calm. And he went and he changed his clothes and uh, prepared himself, made himself presentable, and then came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he greeted the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him that you possess two qualities which are liked or loved by Allah Almighty for appearance and deliberation, deliberateness. So the, the, the concept is uh, these two together something that is beloved by Allah Almighty. One of the benefits of combining knowledge and helm as well is to win the trust of others. When they know that you do not take decisions at an impulse, you are not affected by the, or easily affected by the situations uh, around you, you do not hesitantly uh, give, give ruling that might, you might regret later on, you have the knowledge and you have the, the composure to think it over and give a wise uh, advice or ruling behind you, this will one, win the trust of people to you and uh, will, will make them accept what you uh, are saying or, or delivering. Uh, it will also uh, make you uh, a positive person in the society and it will give you a good uh, insight uh, with optimism. Uh, when you have the knowledge and you have the composure or the, the, the helm with it, uh, inshallah, you will uh, have the concept of what is called tafa'ul or optimism, something that the Messenger وسلم, loved a lot. And whenever he had any to choose between any two things, usually he'll choose the thing that is easier and the thing that is more uh, facilitated to people. And the Messenger وسلم, loved positivism a lot and he uh, uh, and, and loved optimism and he was optimistic uh, all the time we have endless story of that uh, probably one of them is very interesting because we are seeing the fulfillment of that in our time which when the messenger وسلم, in the very beginning days of islam 
when the followers of the Messenger وسلم, and he himself were tortured and persecuted by the people of Quraysh, and he was leaning towards the Kaaba, relaxing there, and people came complaining to the Messenger وسلم, because of what is happening to them from the disbelievers. And they say to the Messenger وسلم, invoke the curse of Allah Almighty upon them. Ask Allah Almighty to punish them and curse them. So the Messenger وسلم, was upset. And he said, Allah Almighty did not send me to curse people. He sent me to teach them and guide them. And then he prayed for their guidance. The Messenger وسلم, gave here the, the optimism. The Messenger وسلم, gave them a, a very strange information. He says, by Allah Almighty, this religion of Islam will spread all over the world. There will be no place where there is day and night except that this religion will reach. However, you are in a hurry. It means it will take time. You need to be patient and you need to be forbearing. And then it will come, inshallah, in due time. We are seeing the fulfillment of that prophecy of the Messenger وسلم, in our time. Here we find the knowledge of the Messenger وسلم, with the composure and the, the helm of the Messenger. وسلم, he was the most uh, tolerant person and the best example of helm in Islam. Uh, another thing is that the, uh, the combination of ilm and helm will make the person more sincere. He will make him more honest uh, in his uh, work. He will, he will uh, whenever he will do anything, he will perfect it. He will do the best that he can. And it will also increase his knowledge. When you have the knowledge and you have the helm, your knowledge will increase. If you have the knowledge and you don't have the helm, most likely your knowledge is going to decrease. And the example we would like to take here comes from the, a story in the Holy Quran. That story is the story of Musa alayhi salam. Now, Musa alayhi salam thought that he was the most knowledgeable person on earth. He is the person who speaks to Allah with Allah Almighty, directly without a messenger. He was uh, Kalimullah. The, 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 Musa alayhi salam, one of the greatest prophets and messengers of all time. And he had great knowledge. And he went through so many experiences throughout his life. Now, uh, he was surprised. Is there any of the creature of Allah Almighty who has more knowledge than me? And Allah Almighty told him, yes, one of my servants has more knowledge than you. Now, what did Musa alayhi salam did? Now, Musa alayhi salam, with all that knowledge and all the, the, the busyness of, uh, of the messagehood uh, that he was carrying, still he went and uh, starting to seek knowledge from that person, searching for that person, traveling a length to meet him and seek knowledge from him. What did that do to him? It increased his knowledge more and more. However, he had a limit. And after a little while, he could not control uh, himself and he was not patient enough. And the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about this point. The messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, may Allah Almighty have mercy upon my brother Musa, peace be upon him. If he was more patient, we would have learned much more. We, we, we could have reached that knowledge that he received would have reached us and we would have learned much more. So you see the concept of when you, are, you have patience and you are trying to learn with that patience, inshallah, you will learn much, much more. Uh, one of the beautiful criteria or characteristics, one of the beautiful characteristics of people with uh, ilm and helm is that they encourage other people, especially students. They, they make successful people. They are the teachers of successful and famous people. And this is something that they do. And this is something that is very important. We get an example in the Messenger وسلم, himself. And he says, uh, verily, I was sent to perfect the moral code. And uh, there was a beautiful story. Uh, in the household of the Messenger وسلم, between him and his wives. May Allah might be pleased with them. Uh, at the end of the story, one of the wives requested something to, for him to withhold some information or her answer, her beautiful and wise answer from the rest of the wives of the Messenger وسلم. However, the Messenger وسلم, refused that and says, if they will ask me, I will answer them. This is a very beautiful and wise and beneficial information I'm not going to withhold. And then the Messenger وسلم, explained, he says, Allah Almighty did not send me to be harsh or to cause harm or to be stubborn. 
Rather, Allah Almighty sent me to teach and to make things easy for people. So you see the people of knowledge and helm, people of helm and helm, they encourage other people to be better and they teach other people to be uh, better and they do not make things difficult for them. Rather, they try to make it easy uh, for them. Uh, one of the interesting thing also about ilm and helm is that the person who possesses that seeks the benefit of the society. So he has that oversight to think about or concentrate upon beneficial thing and practical things uh, for the, uh, uh, the society. We have a story during the time of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by Abu Mas'ud al-Ansari radiallahu anhu. He said that a man came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him, O messenger of Allah, by Allah Almighty, I keep away from the morning uh, prayer, early in the morning, only because so and so, that is the imam, the leader of the salah, prolongs the prayer when he leads uh, us in that prayer. So the narrator, Abu Masood radiallahu anhu, says, I never saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more furious in giving advice than at that time, than he was at that time. He then said, the Messenger Sallallahu said, gave an advice not to make difficult things for people and so on. He said, oh people, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, some of you make people dislike good deeds or some of you make people hate the faith. SubhanAllah. Why? Because of their actions, of what they are doing. Because he is prolonging the Salah so much so that some of the people behind would rather miss that salah and pray alone in the house or with their families rather than going there because he prolongs it. So the messenger sallallahu said, some of you make people dislike the good deed. So whoever among you lead the people in prayer, he should shorten it because among them, among those behind him, there are weak people, there are old people, there are those who have needs and they need to attend to it and so on uh, and so forth. So uh, you, you see that when a person had the knowledge and the characteristics following the order and advice of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he will make things easy for people and uh, search for things that benefit them and avoid causing any difficulty or harm uh, to them. Uh, the, the idea of helm is, uh, doesn't mean to be ignorant about what is going around you. This is something that is, we need to clarify. Uh, we have a proverb in Arabic that is very beautiful. They say, my tolerance or my forbearance uh, is uh, deaf, does not hear. However, my ear is not deaf. So I do hear things, but I do not make it affect my, my tolerance. I do hear it, I know what is going around. However, I am composed and I, I am in self-control and I do not make that uh, overtakes me. This is the meaning of, of helm. This is something very beautiful and very important. And this is very important when you are dealing with people. We have the story of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, the, the ruler uh, of Islam during his era. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was very wise and he was well known to be among the wise people of uh, Arabs. Uh, people uh, uh, came to him uh, to visit him and a man said to him, a man was of ill temper and he said to him, by Allah Almighty, O oh, Muawiyah, you will lead us in a straight path and a good path, or we will make you follow the good path and the right path. Muawiyah, one of the Sahaba, one of the followers of the Messenger Sallallahu and companions of the Messenger Sallallahu one of the writers of the Holy Quran at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu in front of the Messenger Sallallahu And he is speaking to him this way. What would you expect the reaction of Muawiyah? Muawiyah asked him simply, with what are you going to make me or force me to follow the right path? So the man says, uh, with sticks, means like we will hit you with sticks. So Muawiyah simply answered, he says, okay, then I will follow the right path. And that's it. So, it's, so the idea, you see the, the composure and the, 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 the forbearance of this beautiful example, if he had been angry or, 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 or had any other reaction, probably it will make him, even himself, look uh, less favorable in front of people. But with this answer, the man felt uh, shy uh, because of what he said, uh, rather than uh, Muawiyah. Uh, we have another example of uh, Amr bin al-As, another uh, important figure in Islam, uh, and one of the Sahaba, may Allah Almighty be pleased with all of them. So uh, a man, he said to him, by Allah Almighty, I will 
concentrate all my effort to follow you and, 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 and search for your faults means. And uh, if you will say anything to me, I will reply that with 10. So if you say anything bad about me, I will have already uh, uh, accumulated so much information because I, I, I will dedicate myself to searching for your faults and your mistakes and I will insult you with 10 instead of one. So uh, Amr radiallahu anhu simply said to him, by Allah Almighty, as for you, if you will say to me 10 words, I will not say to you not even one. And that's it. So it was over with this. So you see the idea of the, 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 the person of Hilm is that when people actually mistreat him or say bad things about him, he, he becomes even better in morals and etiquettes and behavior rather than worse. And uh, we have a beautiful example uh, in the life of uh, Ibn Abbas, عنهما, the cousin of the Messenger وسلم, and the most knowledgeable person in the Holy Quran uh, among the Sahaba. Uh, uh, so a man uh, came to him and, and, and insulted him, said bad things about him so much. So Ibn Abbas عنه, uh, looked to his one of his students, uh, Ikrima, named Ikrima. he said, oh Ikrima, check with the person, maybe he has a need that we, we could not fulfill before or he needs us to fulfill it for him so that we will do it for him, inshallah. So go and search. Check with him if he needs anything, okay? Follow and check. So the man became shy of his uh, words uh, and, and, and apologized. So you see, the idea is that when a person uh, is in composure or when a person has that ilm and helm together, he will be a role model for people around him and uh, the, the students will benefit from that a lot. Uh, we can conclude with the beautiful uh, uh, incident that happened uh, during the Tabi'in time. Uh, Sha'bi, Sha one of the uh, famous scholars of his era, so uh, a man insulted him uh, a lot and accused him. Uh, so uh, the reaction of a Shabi was uh, exactly this. He says, if you are true about your, if you are truthful in what you are saying, then may Allah Almighty forgive me because I have done so much wrong. And if you are wrong and you are lying in what you are saying, then may Allah Almighty forgive you. See, so you are saying bad things about me. If you are true in these things, then may Allah Almighty forgive me. I need forgiveness from Allah Almighty. But if you are lying, then may Allah Almighty forgive you. So you see this beautiful uh, reaction of people of ilm and helm, and this is something that we need uh, a lot. And we need to concentrate on the highest levels of, of knowledge and, and, and morality, uh, both together. Knowledge, of course, stands out uh, above everything in Islam. And uh, seeking the highest things and the best of things is one of the etiquettes in Islam. This is something that sadly many Muslims are not realizing now. During the early times of Islam, Muslims knew that. And uh, that is why Muslims led the world, the Islamic civilization led the world in innovation and discoveries and knowledge and, 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 and good characteristics uh, for close to 1000 years because they understood Islam correctly. The Messenger وسلم, said, Verily, Allah Almighty is beautiful and He loves beautiful things. And verily, Allah Almighty loves the esteemed matters or the high matters, the most important matters. And He dislikes the lowest things, the matters that do not concern you are of no benefits. So, concentration on things that are of high importance and high benefits, something that Allah Almighty loves a lot. And that is why the people of knowledge are at the highest place in uh, paradise when they are good and when they are pious and when they are following the uh, order of the Messenger Wasallam. However, this is linked with khuluq as well. This is linked with etiquettes and morals. The Messenger Wasallam said, shall I not tell you about the most beloved among you to me and the closest in seating to me in the hereafter? And the people remain silent. So the Messenger Wasallam repeated the question again they remain silent when he repeated the second or third time people said yes O messenger of allah tell us the messenger وسلم, said the one among you with the best character the best morals or best behaviors so you see that so we have the people of knowledge are in high grades in paradise the people of morals and etiquettes in the high grade of paradise what about if one of them is missing? If someone has great knowledge, but he is very bad in 
morals and characteristics. What will happen to him? He will not be in the highest place. He will be actually further away from the Messenger وسلم, because Allah Almighty dislike that. The Messenger وسلم, said that among the, 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 the dearest uh, and closest uh, among you to me on the day of resurrection uh, are those with the best behavior or character and the most hateful and the farthest from me on the day of resurrection will be the talkative, the most pretentious, the, 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 the rhetorical people, people who are, uh, have, have knowledge that are use, they are using that to look down our people, to feel arrogant, God forbid. Uh, they talk so much and they are arrogant uh, and they are, they are boasting, uh, boastful about themselves. Uh, the Messenger وسلم, say they will be the furthest away from the Messenger وسلم, uh, in the hereafter. So we need to be very careful about that and hopefully we have understood the concept of the importance of Hilm and Ilm when they are together. May Allah Almighty make us among those who have knowledge and among those who have good characteristics so that we'll be inshallah among those who are closest to the Messenger وسلم, in the hereafter and most beloved uh, to him and closest to him. And may Allah Almighty keep us away from uh, the, the, the bad etiquettes and bad morals and bad behavior uh, of people. And may Allah Almighty uh, grant us beneficial knowledge and good knowledge that will make us uh, uh, benefit from them in this world and in the hereafter, inshallah. And uh, we remind ourselves of the saying of Ibn Mas'ud, uh, who said to a man during his era, uh, that you are at a time when there are lots of people of knowledge and deep knowledge in the religion and few reciters or people who are talkative. However, there will come a time when there will be few scholars and people of knowledge and there will be lots of people who talk. And uh, sadly, this we are seeing the, the, this happening nowadays, especially on social media and around us when people who do not have enough knowledge and they are speaking about major things that are affecting the, the people at, at large and, and, uh, and affecting the livelihood of people or speaking about the deep matters in the religion of Islam without having enough knowledge and enough background. So we pray to Allah Almighty not to make us among them. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Thank you very much to Al Manar Center for arranging this. And thanks to all those who are attending and watching. And hope to see you again, inshallah, in the future. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakallahu khairan, Shaykh. Um, I can't thank you enough for actually, you know, uh, Shaykh, uh, uh, establishing a core foundation of our ilm summit and mashallah it was well justified especially from the aspect of actually letting the people know and understand the importance of knowledge in combination with the manners which is an extremely important thing jazakallah khair shaykh for uh, the wonderful reminder the wonderful uh, knowledge that you've shared may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who listen um, understand practice and are able to share this with the rest of the world as well inshallah um, ta'ala amin ya rab jazakallah khair shaykh once again for joining thank you thank you I mean, Barakal, exactly always good having you there shaykh barakallah khair jazakallah khair it's my pleasure and thank you for arranging that jazakallah khair jazakallah khair wa iyyak jazakallah khair Salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam wa rahmatullahi So, mashallah, there was uh, Dr. Muhammad uh, Al Kubaisi uh, delivering his talk on the topic Elm and Helm, which uh, we cannot hear your voice, uh, brother. No. Yes, I think uh, our. Or, uh, yeah, now, now, now it's fine. Now we can hear you. Inshallah. So fantastic, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair once again. Jazakallah and uh, khair. I was just uh, you know, trying to thank you for that. And inshallah, we'll see you again next time. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
next session. And just before I call upon our next speaker, our beloved Sheikh Mufti Menk, uh, to start his talk, I want to remind all of you of the different elements, which I already mentioned earlier as well. But it's a good reminder because after the session, we would like for all of you to, inshallah, go to our website, almanarsconvention.com hyphen elm summit and inshallah from there you can register on the courses that are going to be there for tomorrow the, those are starting 10 o'clock in the morning until 12 which is our first session which will be taken care, taken by uh, our honorable sheikh hussein yi and the topic there is crave for creed which is based on the subject of ulum al aqidah inshallah ta'ala you're all welcome to join like i said you have to register for this on our website and inshallah the link is below this uh, this uh, live session that we have on youtube the timing for that is 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock it's a two hour course on the ulum al aqidah on the craving of creed crave, crave for creed and then we've got this next course that will be for tomorrow, which is starting in the afternoon, right after Asr Salah, UAE time, which is 4.30 p.m. to 7 o'clock. Um, and inshallah, the subject will be taken uh, up by Sheikh Muhammad Eid al muhairi from the Emirat, from UAE. And inshallah, he will be taking the session, the exploring the sciences of Quran, which is based on Ulum al-Quran. So inshallah, you can all benefit. And this will be a session that uh, you can join us uh, in the course as well. And these are all live courses. So definitely when you join, inshallah ta'ala, we will be going through these sessions in detail. So, uh, and then after that, tomorrow we have, uh, again, the same way we started today in the evening, starting 8.20 p.m. UAE time, the lectures that will start, inshallah ta'ala. And you can have all the details on our website, which I did mention, which is also mentioned in the link below so do make sure to visit our website to understand more about what is lined up for tomorrow and for the next week inshallah ta'ala now without any uh, uh, ado inshallah i'd like to request uh, mufti Meng to join us um, and inshallah ta'ala as we all know about sheikh mufti Meng, he's joining us live from zimbabwe and inshallah ta'ala we hope that everybody joining from zimbabwe is also safe and inshallah ta'ala is able to view him on our platform we're all excited about that and i'm sure everybody joining us globally is excited as well we all know sheikh mufti menk who's a leading islamic scholar who studied sharia from jamia al-islamiyya madina al munawwara from the madina university and inshallah ta'ala he will be taking up this next talk which is very interesting and like i said Elm Summit is all about reviving the true spirit of learning, the learning of Islam, the deen of Islam. And inshallah ta'ala, he shall be taking care of the subject of the talk, uh, topic of the talk being seek to succeed. Seek to succeed. Fantastic. Sheikh Mufti Menk, um, it's all on you. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We commence with the praise of Allah سبحانه وتعالى we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah to bless them, to bless every one of us, to grant us goodness. And we ask Allah to elevate our status. My beloved brothers and sisters, I am so happy to be a part of this beautiful Al-Manar convention where we are seeking to learn uh, different topics and inshallah before I commence I must say I am coming to you live from Zimbabwe I am speaking slowly simply because the internet connection from this is not that grand so I may be cut off at some point I may be muffled at some point but inshallah I hope you get the gist of what I'm going to say the topic I've been given to speak very, very interesting because it says, seek, seek to succeed. 
when you look at the topic seek to succeed, the minute you look at the first word seek, in Islam, that would actually come very, very close to knowledge. Seek knowledge in order that you succeed. But there are other things that would actually make us succeed with the knowledge that have very, very high priority in Islam. I want to start off for a minute to speak about the seeking of the knowledge, and then I want to go to the issue of the success. When I seek to succeed, I first need to seek knowledge, not in order to show or to boast or to brag or to argue, but in order for me to gain closeness to Allah, to be able to put it into practice, and in a beautiful way to be able to convey it to others, bearing in mind their unique situations. Because a, a method that I employed to get the message to one person may not be an effective message for another person or a community. What might be effective and impactful in one community may not be as effective and impactful in another community or a society. So I need to learn primarily for myself to recognize Allah. I'm learning in order to recognize my maker. Who made me? Why did he make me? Where am I? Keep asking yourselves those questions until you get to the answers of those questions. So you, you must not be ashamed of questions that you have. You must not be shy of seeking knowledge because in Nama Shifa'ul Ayi As-Su'alu, indeed the cure of ignorance is the question or the asking. If you're not going to ask, you're not going to learn expand your knowledge. I want to know who is Allah. That is the most important thing you could ever learn. Because where were you one year before you were born? One might argue, well, you know what? I was in existence, part in my father and part my mother. In reality, there was a time when you were neither in your father nor in your mother because you, they, Two did not exist, but in a unique way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, <laughs> Had a time not passed for man when they were nothing to be mentioned in the past. There was there not a certain time when you were nothing to be known. You were not in existence at all as mankind. Then Allah created you. You were somewhere. Yesterday, I was speaking to my children and I said, where were you one year before you were born? And the child says, well, you know, I was with Allah. And I said, well, when we die, we're going to go back to Allah. And it's going to be exciting and amazing and beautiful if prepared for it. If we haven't prepared for it, what do you expect? May Allah forgive us, grant us goodness, grant us Jannatul Firdaus, and make it easy for us. So we need to know who is Allah. And we, we need to learn and seek, not in order to argue, like I said. One of the narrations, the Prophet said, whoever seeks knowledge in order to argue with the or in order to show off to the to the ignorant or to argue with the knowledgeable, they will not smell the scent of Jannah, which means they will be promising their entry into Jannah, even though they sought knowledge. Sometimes we see a scholar, we see a person of knowledge, for example, and we see that they have a good life in some cases. In a lot of cases, it's tough. In a lot of cases, the scholars make do with meager income with something that is minimum their families struggle as well but in some cases there are those whom Allah has blessed so when a person sees that and they say I want to study Islam because I want to fly around the globe like so and so I want to study Islam because I want to be important like so and so I want to study Islam because I want to be famous like so and so 
all of those reasons are null and void in Islam. There is no baraka in that type of studies or that intention. So it is a wrong intention that will come back to us with the harm rather than benefit. So let us correct the intention. When you are seeking, you are seeking in order to succeed in the dunya and the akhirah. Primarily, you want to learn who is Allah. Primarily, you want to learn who made me. Why did they make me? Why am I on earth? I was speaking to another of my children yesterday. And I was saying when I was very little, I did not understand exactly of Salah, why we needed to pray five times a day, why we needed to do certain things in a certain way. As we grew older, we, we understood, we, we checked the meaning of so when you are praying five times a day or reading the Quran, if you don't know the meaning of what you're saying and you're not going to seek the meaning of what you're saying and why you are saying it, you will not be able to succeed because your, your success is actually connected to how much engaged you are with your prayer. If you're not bothered about what you're saying, the concentration will minimize because it becomes parrot fashion. Although you might fulfill a farah, but you have not gotten anywhere because you, have, you are stagnant. You know, stagnant meaning it's sitting still. It's not moving at all. You need to make sure that you move in the right direction. You, you need to learn more and more. Learn the meanings of the verses of the Quran. Understand what Allah is telling you. What I am very saddened with at times. People make a great effort in order to live their small lives in very short life, but they've made no effort to build the hereafter. When a virus comes around like coronavirus, people are taking every precaution to live. Yet death will overtake them even without the virus when the time comes. But they have not taken precaution to be able to survive in the hereafter. So while I'm wearing my mask for the sake of protection from a virus that I cannot see, it taken a moment to wear the dress code that Allah took me, which is going to make me survive in the hereafter. Be prepared to actually uh, go through a lot of screening and a lot of procedures in order to make sure that they are free of virus. That's important very important but wallahi more important than that is to prepare to make a little effort it will be inconvenient maybe for a short time or a little bit sometimes you might have to give up your sleep to be able to please allah with salatul fajr it will become an honor when you seek knowledge when you know what it's about earlier today i was speaking to a friend of mine who is a, a muslim psychiatrist and he was telling me People begin to get used to certain things when they see a benefit from it and they get addicted to it. And he, being a Muslim, told me, I want to express the benefits of Salah that people can feel immediately. So that just like they're engaged with the gym and they get addicted to fitness and they get addicted to exercise and keeping prim and prop, they also need to get addicted to salah such that if the salah time comes, they make sure that they go for that salah, subhanallah. So let's get back to the issue of seeking. We seek in order for us to succeed. In the interim, we will also Part of my success is to make sure that what I have, I convey it, I practice upon it, convey it in a beautiful way to people such that I don't chase them away from Allah, but I actually bring them towards Allah. Today, on a global level, I can be talking to people from every country in the world at the same time, like right now. And at the same time, I, everyone has a relationship with Allah. Some are strong, some are weaker, some are going through different issues, some follow a different culture, others might come from a different environment. To, be able to speak to everyone all at once is not easy. It's become difficult. How can I speak to everyone in a way that I keep encouraging those 
who relationship with Allah to become better such that those who have a relationship do not feel that they are useless or they are out of mercy of Allah. I need to try and bring all of them so the weak ones feel empowered, the strong ones are reassured and become even more empowered such that we don't lose that relationship with Allah or with anyone. In fact, we build it. So it's difficult, but that is our duty. When you seek knowledge in for the correct reasons, you become soft with people. You are not arrogant and haughty. You don't smash and bash people because you realize what I'm holding is more delicate than eggs. What I'm holding is more delicate than thin glass. I'm not to drop it. I'm not to damage it because that it could be intense. We, we are holding a tray of eggs, for example. We need to be careful. Deliver these eggs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can reach out to others and at the same time, improve ourselves. Now let me move to the other issue of seek to succeed. That term says, who wants it? I want it, you want it, everyone wants it, we want to succeed. If I were to ask you in your eyes, what is the meaning of success? What will you say? Different people say different things. Some people might tell you that, well, if I have a million dollars every year is success. People will say success has nothing to do with the dunya, but it has to do with the akhirah, which means it has nothing to do with this worldly life. It has to do with the hereafter. To be honest with you, success is when we have pleased Allah. That is success. When we have pleased Allah, wallahi, that is ultimate success. The discipline that you need in order to survive as a human being is what Islam gives you. Imagine when a person goes to the gym and they are interested in making their body better. They are disciplined. The sports persons, usually they will tell you we understand Islam so much because it is a religion of discipline and sports is all about discipline. If you don't have that discipline, you won't succeed in sport. Well, I can tell you Allah has given in way of life by me trying to please Allah I will have a beautiful life to begin with such world either I will have success which means contentment I'm happy with the deal I keep trying to achieve is beneficial even for that Allah will reward me and at the same time I will succeed in this world even if I didn't have as much as my neighbors I didn't have as much as uh, the wealthy might have not had the skin that someone else has had that was blemished, or I might not have had the beautiful eyes that someone has had, or the children that one has had, or the gifts that someone else has. If I don't have all of that, but I have the pleasure of Allah, he will give me contentment with what I have. This is why we are taught about a rida bil qada, to be happy with the decree of Allah. You know, the hadith says, work hard to what you believe is beneficial for you and seek the help of Allah. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. And if something happens thereafter that is negative, don't say, Oh, had I done this, then that would have happened. And if I did not do this, then this would have not happened. And if this, then that, because the term if opens the door of shaitan. That's what we're taught. So subhanAllah, we need to be content more than amassing things. If you amass a lot, what's the end? You're going to die and leave it behind. How did it help you? It didn't help you unless... You used it in the obedience of Allah, subhanAllah, ya Rabbil Alameen. So my brothers and sisters, what we need to understand here is that success is told to us six times a day. In fact, no, uh, 10 times a day, 10 times a day in Adhan and an, or uh, five times in Iqama. SubhanAllah, where am I heading? Where am I heading? I'm sure you would have picked up what I'm about to say. 
Amazing. Don't we hear that so much? Allah says, come to success. Seek to succeed. We are seeking to succeed. I want success. I've spoken to you about knowledge, about getting it for the sake of Allah and with the right intentions. And subhanAllah, it doesn't stop. But Allah says, when you know who is Allah, you will realize the power of the invitation. Invitation. Let's face it. If someone is to invite you to their house and they are to tell you, please come, they phone you again, please come, they phone you again, please come, we've got nice food, we've got a good company, we've got a beautiful environment, a full table, or something else, whatever it may be, and they invite you. If they're an important person, even if they didn't tell you what was in store for you at their place, the fact that they invited you, you would consider it an honor to be invited. My brothers and sisters, the greatest honor is to be invited by Allah. When he tells you, Hayya ala salah, and then he says, Hayya ala al-falah, literally telling you in exactly the words, come to prayer, come to success. And this is repeated twice in every adhan, and the adhan happens five times a day. And it is repeated in iqama in some parts of the world twice in every iqama and in some in most parts once in every iqama either way the point i'm making is it, the repetition of it allah's telling you hayya ala al falah come to success where are you my brothers and sisters this talk would not be complete if i did not speak about the success that lies in salah and to seek salah is something absolutely important look out it, search for it, wait for it. This is why the hadith says, from among those who are going to have the special shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment is a person whose heart was hanging with the places of sujood or the house of Allah. Always connected to the house of Allah. They were seeking the success. Allah says, come to success. And you say, here, O oh Allah. Allah says, come to prayer. Yes, I'm here, O oh Allah. You will then achieve success. This is why one of the first things that the children of Adam or human beings would be asked about when they leave this world is salah. The hadith says, if the salah and the accounts of that salah and the prayer is in order, then the rest will be made easy. And if that is not, then the rest will be difficult. So my brothers and sisters, think about it. Think about it deeply and carefully. We're being called to success. And when we are called to success, Allah is speak, speaking about one of the pillars of Islam, which is the five daily prayers. So remember to be strengthened in it. The rest will branch from it. All your other acts of worship and everything else will branch from it. If a person doesn't pray, they need to work hard, hard on their honesty, on their on various other uh, matters of the faith. They need to work very hard. But if they pray five times a day and they enjoy it and consider it an honor and a privilege, their relationship with Allah would definitely be on a better and a higher level. Now I want to go back. So I've spoken about Salah. Now, to go back to the issue, subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very, very clear that revelation is the root of all knowledge. Revelation, root of all knowledge. And revelation is divided into two. There's no way that anyone can deny that. It is the Quran, and the second is the Sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we speak of the initial ultimate source of knowledge, we will talk about the word of Allah. We will talk about the <laughs> Allah has taught man what man did not know. Then Allah says, <laughs> And you have not been given knowledge except a little. We know. And you don't know, subhanallah. Wallahu ya'lamu wa 
antum la ta'lamun Allah knows and you don't know qul hal yastawi alladhina ya'lamuna wal ladhina la ya'lamun say are they equal those who know those who don't know that's an encouragement from Allah wa fawqa kulli ilmin alim above everyone with knowledge is one with more knowledge until you get to Allah who is Al-Alim, be one with all the knowledge. That is Allah. Allah tells you something. It is 100% factual. There is absolutely no doubt in it. If you're a believer, you would recognize that your maker knows better than anyone and everyone. We're living in a generation. Those who are young, they won't know much about the telex. They won't know much about the facts. They won't know much about booking calls abroad and getting them. They won't know much about the, the radios that we used to use, medium wave and, you know, the, the, the olden day things. They won't know much even about cassettes and cassette players. But because they're living in the new age and generation, if we try to tell them about the past, they won't. Uh, understand it, and sometimes they will be in awe. Oh, wow, is that what happened? We're told about the Spanish flu, and when we were told about what happened a hundred years back, we were like, Oh, is that what happened? So they lived it, they did whatever they had to. We have advanced, we don't know the past as well as it happened, we only know a few snippets of told, and a lot of the times, what we're told is actually warped or it is not accurate when there are wars that have taken place survivor whether he was right or wrong the story becomes tainted based on who is telling it so when when people the war the victor or the one who won the war was the one who the story you will never ever know for certain who was right and who was wrong because you are told the story by one party. The other party did not survive to tell you the story. That's how weak man is. Knowledge from Allah is encompassing everything. It can never be wrong. Allah knows the beginning, that which we don't know. Allah knows the end, that which we won't know. SubhanAllah. Allah knows everything. So when he tells you something, you need to realize if you're a believer, this is revelation. It is untainted. It is absolute. It is actually what I surrender to. That is the meaning of the term Muslim. So when we're seeking to succeed, we have to recognize the Quran. We have to recognize revelation and we surrender to it. That's why I'm called a Muslim. I mean, people choose to be Muslim, alhamdulillah. And once you're a Muslim, you have placed on your shoulders all the rules and regulations of Islam. <laughs> ولا مؤمنة إذا قضى الله رسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيار أمرهم It is not befitting for a believing male or female when Allah and his Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم have declared things that they feel in their hearts that we have we still have a choice about this True believers say if Allah said it if the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said it I have no choice. I'm going to do this. And I consider it an accurate 100% and beyond. I might doubt what I'm seeing with my eyes, but I will not doubt what, what Allah has told me. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. That is amazing. We're seeking to succeed. And it is tried and tested and people have succeeded. We always need to improve. My brothers, so if you would like to understand the source of knowledge, you've got to go to Revelation. Quran leads you to something. Whatever Allah has, whatever the messenger has given you, you take it. Whatever he has entered you, consider it an instruction. Whatever he has uh, stopped you from or prohibited, consider it as a prohibition. What does that mean? Follow the sunnah. Follow the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What he's instructed you, take it as an instruction. What he has told you not to do, take it as a prohibition. As simple as that. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you want mercy, if you want goodness, 
follow Allah, follow the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why am I saying this? Some people say that I believe in the Quran and that's it. I don't believe in anything else. I tell you, if you only believe in the Quran, but it's true belief in the Quran, it will lead you automatically to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. I've already read one, two verses for you. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu atiyu Allah wa atiyu Rasul. Oh, you who believe, follow Allah. Follow the messenger. The Quran, yes, it is there. Allah has explained things, but the details are always found in the Sunnah. Do not let someone con you into thinking that I only follow the Quran. Trust me, my brothers and sisters, a lot of details are not written in the Quran. The Quran people say, well, the Quran says we have recorded everything. Yes, we agree. But Everything meaning Allah told you in the Quran to follow the Sunnah. That's why we are following the Sunnah. And the Sunnah then tells you what else to do. Subhanallah. So it's amazing. If you were to look at the wudu and the, the, uh, the details of the exact timings of the prayers, the number of prayers and so on, uh, all those details are not found in the Quran. You know, there is a, a small uh, detail, but not much. And in certain things, there's hardly any detail. And in some things, there is tremendous detail. For example, the issue of inheritance, the shares of inheritance. There is tremendous detail when it comes to the shares of inheritance, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells us every proportion for every individual. And Allah is telling us this is how the inheritance should be distributed. Why I'm talking about inheritance is also because the Prophet says, one of the first signs of the of the hour is that knowledge will be taken and what this uh, knowledge is or one of the first subjects that will be snatched away is the subject of inheritance where people will be disputing about something and they won't find a single person to be enlightening them about the matter regarding inheritance and the estate of the deceased and so on so surely we should make an effort to try and learn uh, Allah says that it's an amazing narration. The Prophet Sallallahu tells us Allah, when he takes the knot, he's not just going to snatch it like this. You know, he's not just going to snatch it from the people while they're just watching. You know, but he takes it with the death of the ulama. One by one, the scholars die, and the, and, and the generation changes, and no scholars are left. And what happens at the end of that? Well, at the end of that, there is nobody remaining except ignorant people who are considered knowledgeable. When they are asked questions, they themselves are astray, and they lead others astray. So we have to be careful, and this is why. Every one of us, myself included, we are only students. We're only studying. We will be corrected. We shall be corrected. We will excel. We shall progress. We shall learn more on a daily basis. We can uh, correct ourselves and we must. We must improve and we must continue. Never stop learning. We will continue learning, inshallah. I have another topic in these conferences, inshallah, where I will be speaking about knowledge in slightly greater detail. But today, it is also it is also all about knowledge. It's about ilm. And this is why I say the root and the source of this knowledge is the Quran. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna allaha la yarfa'u bihadha al-kitabi aqwaman wa yada'u bihi khareed. It's a hadith, actually. Prophet where he says Allah elevates with this Quran certain people and he drops with the same Quran certain people. And that is why the Prophet also says khayrukum, khayrukum. that means the best from amongst you. This is a very interesting narration because whenever you look at any narration where the Prophet, peace be upon him, says from amongst you is and then he mentions something they are all connected. There is no negation. There is no contradiction. All of them are connected. He said, Khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa'allamahu. The best from amongst you, the ultimate best from amongst you, are those who learn the Qur'an, 
and who teach it. Obviously, in the middle, when you learn the Quran, the Quran will tell you about practicing upon it. So it, the, the practice, you learn, you put it into practice, you convey it to others, and you leave the world. They will learn, they will put it into practice, they will convey it to others and leave the world. The others will learn, put it into practice, convey it into others and leave the world. That's what the world is all about. We, we were brought into this world to be tested. So you're tested when you're young, your parents are tested, you're tested as you grow older, you're tested with salah. It's like, it's like a syllabus in a course where if you're going to do, for example, medicine, you're going to start off at high school, you're going to go through mathematics. Are you tested? Yes. Biology, did you go through it? Yes. Uh, chemistry, did you go through it? Yes. Physics, did you go through it? Yes. Uh, uh, what about geography? Did you go through it? Yes. Uh, what about uh, commerce? Did you go through it? Yes. What about accounts? Did you go through it? Yes. And then you tick, tick, tick. And people say, well, GCSEs, I got 10 A's, 12 A's, 14 A's. We're happy. We're excited. Allah tests you one after the other. You get married. Did you go through that test? Uh, it's a big test. Okay. You might go through divorce. Did you go through that one? Yes. How did you pass? Ah, I passed. Mashallah. I did well. Did you have children? Yes. Oh, very big test. Did you go through that? Yes. Did you lose any child? Okay. We tested you with that one too. Okay, fine. Uh, have you been through uh, loss, financial loss? Yes. How did you fare with that examination? Uh, well, well, when you're tested with all the tests, Allah wants to test you and you've passed, you're ready to go into the akhirah. Allah has determined how many tests they will have. Allah promises us we will definitely test every single one of you without a single we will test you. So these tests, this is what happens. You go through it one after the other, after the other. And we have to learn, learn the subject, understand subject, just like mathematics and geography. You learn, you understand the subject, go through the subject, and then you write the exam in the subject. You look forward to writing the exam. Everyone is excited about how your the exams. You know what, brothers and sisters, the Quran is the source. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from amongst you. One who learns the Quran, puts it into practice, gives it to others, and carries on into the hereafter. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us from among those. May Allah make us from among those. So one might ask, what aspect of the Quran is being spoken of? Every single aspect. The reading, the recitation, the tilawa, the tajweed, the riwayat of different types of recital, the meaning, the, 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 the reasons of revelation, the, the uh, rulings and the rules and regulations that come out of it, the, the, the understanding of the verses, the abrogation, uh, the differences in, for example, opinion about certain things, all of that is absolutely important. And you know what? It is very fulfilling, very quenching. And that leads you to the second source of uh, you know, which is also considered a primary source, the second source of knowledge, the sunnah of the Prophet And I've already told you, subhanAllah, it's amazing. You know, it is the only knowledge on earth that is brought together with such things given to the people who carried it. Amazing, amazing. People who carried knowledge, the people who carried in the hadith so much of importance is given to that islam is the only religion where and the only sort of educational uh, uh what can i say university if i can call that it's it's a um, how it's the only uh, way of life where where so much has been compiled about pe people with their names. So if you want to know the companions of Muhammad وسلم, you will have every single one of them named some form of detail, the birth, or for example, what happened, what type of a person they were, uh, who they were married to, their children, their this, their that. And most of you have greater detail. There are a few whom you don't have so much of detail about, but their names are there, or you'll have a little bit about them, you know, depending on how much they participated in carrying forward some of them passed away early some of them took part in uh, you know the the other methods of serving the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's amazing how we would learn so much only in islam about people and then as the generations came down remember the sahaba radiallahu anhu we believe 
They were all brilliant people. If they had a few squabbles among themselves, they were human beings. We are nowhere to be able to it was bad and this was good. No. We keep quiet about it, leave it to Allah. We will benefit from both of them and understand these were all super champions in the eyes of Allah. They were placed as companions of the most beloved and the best of creation. So we believe the best of them was Abu Bakr, Abdullah ibn Abi Quhafa, radiallahu anhu. And then um, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu. Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. These are the great names. We don't swear anyone. We don't curse anyone. We don't belittle anyone. That was the source of knowledge. If someone were to belittle the carriers of the initial knowledge, they've destroyed the deen. What is left of Islam? Imagine if, if someone were to say that, well, I believe in the Prophet, but nobody else around him, then we are defeating the whole purpose because they were the ones who carried everything that we have today to us in a way got to us subhanallah it's quite simple so my brothers and sisters here we have the sunnah of the prophet ﷺ carried by the sahaba radiallahu anhum so we know all of them by name then who was the next generation those known as tabi'in those who followed the sahaba they met the sahaba they were known as Tabinim, great people, mashallah. These generations have been given the greatest importance in Islam because it would be, it would be a failure if we were told, well, none of them were honest people. Subhanallah, how could that happen? How could Allah have made astaghfirullah such a blunder to have, uh, you know, had the people who supported the Prophet ﷺ and who gave their lives for the deen. And then here comes someone and says, well, they were not uh, honest people. SubhanAllah, may Allah grant us goodness and guidance. So this is why we say those generations are the source of knowledge. They are the source of knowledge. It's amazing. And the knowledge came from them. So if you hear about someone else, you always have to ask, well, did the Prophet say that? Did the companions understand it that way? Did the people who followed the companions, the Tabi'in, understand it that way? Did who followed the Tabi'in, you know, uh, confirm this? Is this is how it's supposed to be? That is called knowledge. That is now seeking to succeed. Why? Because that's the path. I'm going to choose that path. And this is why people say, I'm so confused. They say, don't be confused. You have the path. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Say, this is my path. This is the path. هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. The straight path. أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ What do I do? I call towards Allah with knowledge, with sound knowledge. أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Myself and all those who follow me. What do they do? They call towards Allah with knowledge, with guidance. So they have to either come to you with something that is taken from Allah, from his messenger, or from those who followed the messenger. They are called the earliest generation. Anyone who followed thereafter would have to have taken from them. So we have people who sometimes take rulings out of their pockets. We would have to tell them, I'm seeking to succeed. I'm not seeking to fail. My, my, my seeking of success requires that I go to the messenger that I crave to meet on the day of judgment. Many of us, well, we all say we're Muslims. Many of us claim that we have a special love with the Prophet, and we, we do. I mean, we say that, obviously. Those who truly love the Prophet ﷺ would actually want to follow him verbatim, would actually want to follow him completely, and without even question. If I heard my messenger, peace be upon him, did this, oh, I want to do this. Do you know why? Life is too short. When I go into the hereafter, I want to meet with these great people. Subhanallah. I saw an image a few days ago taken from one of the telescopes that have been launched into space recently. And it was showing the Earth from another planet. And the Earth, wallahi, on that photograph was looking smaller than a grain of sand. And I'm thinking that there was a caption written there saying 7.6 billion person on this uh, people on this particular grain of sand. Imagine 7.6. As you zoom in, you start noticing kings and queens and wealthy 
and people who think I'm something, I'm something very big, you know, it is me, you know, subhanallah. And you don't realize it's a grain of sand. Imagine how many grains of sand we walk on a daily basis. If you are to zoom onto the earth, you will find the ants and smaller than the ants and the organisms and the microorganisms. And Allah says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا طَائِرٍ يَطِيرُ بِجَنَاحِهِ إِلَّا أُمَمٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ There is nothing that, that flies in the sky or treads the earth and nothing that walks onto the earth except that they are nations just like you. They are you know, they, they are just like you in terms of the creation. When Allah created them, you have the ants, you have the parent ant, you have the queen ant, you have all the other sibling ants, you have them all doing something. They're obeying the instruction of Allah in their own way. They have their houses, they have their lounges, and they have their, their kitchens, and they have their food, and they eat, and they have their relatives. What happens with you? You just walk, trample, 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 trample. Five footsteps, you took 5,000 ants gone, you didn't even notice, subhanAllah. Do you know what? We are ants and even smaller than ants when you see us from a different planet. Imagine Allah, the greatness of Allah. In a moment, he can actually make us non-existent. And you know what? What would, he, what would we have prepared for the day we're going to go back to Allah? We think we're a big deal and we don't realize, man, Allah says you are so minute, so insignificant. But if you develop a relationship with the maker, not just of you, but of entire creation, that's the best relationship you could have. The best. Whoever made me and the heavens and the earth and the planets and whatever lies between, whether there are 20 galaxies or one, or whether there are 50 different whatever or whatever, however big the, the galaxies are and the skies and whatever it is out there, that which I know, that which I don't know, whoever made them, <laughs> I want to put my head on, my, on the ground and say, oh, you who made everything, you are my Lord, I worship you and you alone. No other relationship is worth it. Allah, Allah alone, subhanAllah. So that Allah sent to us messengers from the beginning. We respect all of them. We speak grand about all of them. Any messenger you hear the name of the Prophet Lot, we say, Lut, alayhi salam, may peace be on him. Musa, alayhi salam, may peace be upon Moses, upon Aaron, upon uh, David, upon Solomon, upon Job, upon whoever else there was, you know, Yahya, whoever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease, including Jesus, may peace be upon him. So this is actually how we would succeed. When we worship Allah alone and we follow the messenger and his path and we understand the source of knowledge and we fulfill our five daily prayers because that is a pillar of Islam that we're taught to uh, go to every time there is the the, 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 the prayer time enters, we are reminded, hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. Amazing. So my brothers and sisters, I don't wish to take up too much time. I think I've overshot my time. I hope you heard me. I hope I did not uh, cut or I hope the voice was not muffled. I don't think that my voice, well, I don't know if the image cut. Maybe I can hear from you, uh, Brother Abdul Hadi. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of you. And I pray that this beautiful ilm convention would actually. Uh, succeed it's going to be prolonging inshallah within two weekends if i'm not mistaken uh allah feekum uh aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina muhammad jazakallah khairan shaykh uh fantastic now i must just say uh you know you you've just given us what uh everybody really is looking for right now um, which is definitely is success. And we've fantastically shown us uh, the uh, process and how we can seek the success, uh, true success. And uh, subhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. Uh, I would definitely say well-spoken and uh, mashallah, great wisdom that has been shared today. I'm sure you, each one of you, our viewers, has benefited from this. And we hope that inshallah ta'ala you are 
um, with us all through these two weeks. And like you rightly mentioned, Sheikh uh, Mufti Mink, this is for two weeks and we shall be continuing next week as well. While we still have sessions for this week, which is tomorrow, we've got courses, we've got lectures in the evening. And then we've got uh, ourselves set for next week as well. So uh, fantastic. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, uh, once again for joining. And uh, I know it must be very late out in Zimbabwe, but thank you very much for joining and uh, helping our viewers uh, with this valuable information. And uh, thank you very much. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa well, brothers and sisters, uh, that was Sheikh Mufti Mank delivering his talk on the topic "Seek to Succeed." To succeed, seek to succeed, and uh, I hope uh, that, inshallah Taala, uh, you have all uh, not just you know being engaged. And I've seen so many of you, mashallah, who have come live on our chat and have been discussing, engaging with us. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you very much for being with us. And mashallah, there's uh, a lot of registrations that have already come in. And if you've not registered so far, then I uh, urge for all of you to inshallah, go ahead and reg register for the courses that are lined up for tomorrow in the morning, starting 10 o'clock UAE time. And the first one, which is going to be uh, taken up by Sheikh Hussein Yi, and then the one in the afternoon, which is starting 4.30 p.m. UAE time, which will be taken up by Sheikh Mohammed uh, Eid al muhairi from UAE. So inshallah, uh, you know the link already. Uh, we've said that uh, a couple of times, and then we've also uh, made sure that we have uh, delivered this through the live chat it is also available on the website so just uh, make sure to go to the link which is www.almanarcenter.com slash elm summit and once you go there you will find the um, registration page for all the courses that are lined up inshallah you may select the ones that you would like we definitely like for all of you to attend as many as uh, the courses you can um, and once again, inshallah ta'ala, we remind you of our uh, exhibition, which is also online. The online exhibition is run on three sections, on three major subjects, which is on the Quran, on the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Islamic history. Benefit from that, I'm sure you will find a very different dimension to and a different learning curve uh, through the information that we have uh, presented to you on the exhibition, inshallah, which is again, like I said, online. Well, uh, we leave you today, inshallah ta'ala, with uh, uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah to keep us all safe and inshallah ta'ala to help us engage and come together seeking the knowledge of Islam, benefiting from it and inshallah ta'ala putting this in practice so that we may gain success in this world and in the hereafter. I leave all of you in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and until we meet tomorrow, jazakumullahu khairan. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق>